All right. All right. All right. So, so we're going into our series, Fit for Life. And um, if you recall, how many people remember the Fit for Life acronym for la uh, uh, last year? It was what? Diet. It stood for dedication, inspiration, eating and exercise, and, and team. And so we, we don't want to forget that. That is a part of it. I want to give you another acronym to help you remember Fit for Life. It's going to be Living Intentional, Faithful, Faithful uh, Eating and Exercise. Living Intentional, Faithful Eating and Exercise. Okay, you can, faithfulness. Okay, we can do faithfulness. That's what I put. As you're right. And so, um, so we're going to be talking about today just to live. Turn to your neighbor and say live. No, turn to him and really declare, tell him to live. Tell him to live. Now, I need to say this to you because uh, we think we're living and we may not be living according to God's plan. And so our goal in this series is not for any of us to have perfect bodies, whatever that might be. Our goal in this series is to move toward having healthy bodies, bodies that honor God. To live right. And so many of us, if the truth be told, there's a gap between our beliefs and our behavior. Uh, and so um, we know what is right, but we don't do it. And so James says, therefore, to him who knows what to do good and does not do it, to him, that's sin. So if you know you shouldn't be eating certain foods and you eat it anyway, you sin it ham hogs and stuff, and you know you you got high blood pressure, you're eating all that you should not be eating, and you already know, and you're trying to say, I'm trying to live stuffing your face with something that you know is causing you to have high blood pressure, diabetes, and all the good stuff, and you're trying to say, I'm trying to live, but you know, no, you're in sin. Whenever you, you know what you shouldn't be eating, the doctor told you what not to eat, and you eat it anyway because you like it, you're sinning. High five, just two people say, I, I, I'm, I'm coming out of sin. C come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of us, we, we don't want to hear this, but this is biblical. Now, our scripture that we're going to stand on is, is very uh, similar to last year. And that it was 1 Corinthians 6, um, 19 to uh, 20. We're going to stand on that. And we're going to stand on that all month and kind of uh, 1 Corinthians 6. You there? All right. I'm going to re read from New Living. It says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? It's a gift. You don't belong to yourself for God bought you with a, a high price. So you must honor God with your body. And so we're, we're, we were bought with a price and so you have to realize that the moment you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, where are those individuals at? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior life. Come on, hands, hands lifted high up to the sky. Uh-huh. So, okay, every, so everybody in here, the Holy Spirit is living in you. you. Okay, you can get excited about that. The Holy Spirit's in you. The question is, is he choking and dying on the inside? No, you could choke them out with your fat. Oh, y'all y'all want me to be nice. I'm sorry. Let me be nice. You want to kill them with your cigarette smoke. Oh, I'm, am I being bad? No, you want to live, but you're doing stuff secretly, privately, then saying, I love God. And the Holy Spirit in there choking. <coughs> you say, he says, live. Holy Spirit's living on the inside, but what are you feeding the Holy Spirit? It's more than just your Bible diet. It is your food diet that's killing it. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, it says, don't depend on your own wisdom. Respect the Lord and refuse to do wrong. Then your body will be healthy and your bones will be strong. <laughs> That's Proverbs. See, life is amazing when you're able to live life to its fullest, but nothing worse than you want to live life and you can't run, you can't do nothing because you didn't treat the body right. 
And we have to get to the point where we understand this. Now, let's go back and understand this. God tells man what he should eat. Let's go back to Genesis. You're, fam you're familiar with this. And God said, behold, I'm going to give you every herb bearing seed. You all with me? And which is upon the face of the earth, you'll, uh, every tree in which the fruit of the tree yields seed is to you and shall be for food. And so God told Adam, he says, look, I'm going to give you uh, all the vegetables that you want to eat. And, uh, and that's what's going to nourish you. And those were his instructions. Now we understand Noah came along, got in this, you know, he, had to, he put all the animals in. And then God gives additional instructions with Noah and uh, Genesis 9. He comes back and says, everything, now everything that moves, everything that's alive is yours for food. He comes back and said, early I, ga I gave you the green plants. He said, I gave you the green plants earlier, but now I'm giving you everything for food. But you must not eat meat that still has blood in it because blood gives life. <laughs> See, is I, now listen, I'm not going to go with semantics with you because the Bible gives such detailed food instructions that if I talked about it right now, you don't want to be a believer no more. No, you won't even go. You'll pick up the shrimp and go. It gives very detailed instruction on what you should eat and how you should eat it, but we don't read that part of the Bible. And so because of that, uh, oftentimes, my first point simply, we have to learn how to eat to live. You can eat everything. He says you can eat everything, but if your blood pressure, but if your, oh, come on. If your, your diabetes is creeping up on you and you're at 200, <laughs> if for some reason your belly is leaning too far over and it's hard to see everything below it, Am I wrong? Is this hard? I'm okay? I am not. Please, I'm not trying to. I'm simply saying you have to eat to live. Now watch this. Your body is so magnificent the way God designed it. Now you correct me if I'm wrong, y'all nutritionist people. The body is designed that if you eat certain foods, your body will turn on itself and eat your fat without you working out. Oh, I'm, I'm all right? Okay, so, so, matter of fact, if I eat enough protein, actually it tells you if you eat your body weight in protein, your body will automatically, without working out at all, you don't have to work out at all, your body will eat every fat cell. It'll eat all the fat in the areas that you have fat. Somebody say, wow, come on. Yeah, so your body, the way he designed you, you don't even have to physically work out like, like crazy, you just got to eat to live. You got to make some decisions. So you can't skip meals and then eat the big meal at night and you ain't eat no protein because your body's designed that if you don't eat that way, you don't eat enough protein, your body says, well, there's not enough protein, eat the muscle. And so then the body starts eating muscle and leaving the fat because it don't want it. Ooh, y'all don't love me. Please tell me y'all with me. I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. And so we have to eat to live. Watch this. Daniel. Daniel 1.15. At the end. Now, Daniel was a slave in this, in this situation. He was captured. They brought him in, and they gave him certain. They said, look, we want to give you all the king's food. You're, you're, you're the king's guest. Daniel says, listen, I don't want to eat that stuff. That's not good for me. And uh, Daniel said, at the end of 10 days, the Bible says Daniel and his three friends. Y'all know who his three friends were? Okay, y'all know them, y'all know them. And they look, the Bible says they looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. Which tells me you're not going to die if you stop eating certain foods. Matter of fact, the way the body works, you can go 21 days without eating. But we go on a 40-day fast and you're going to die. Now, water, now, we know how water works. You can't live without water. Your body is 60% water, made up of 60%. And some of you still don't drink no water. 
Oh, I'm going to help. Please, I'm, I know y'all, 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 I know y'all want the... Y'all want the other version of this. No, you're supposed to drink at least a half a gallon of water a day. Average out how much water you take and then think if you're eating to live. Going, oh, I, oh give, me the, mm, give me the iced tea. It got water in it. Where y'all at? Come on, where y'all at? Okay, I'm going to high five y'all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Give me the iced tea. Oh, Arnold Palmer it. Yeah, M- mix it up. Mix it up. Or, oh, sorry, uptown. <laughs> uptown it. Give me all the sugar. Stir it up. Your body is so awesome. The principle of eating to live is that your body, when you go to sleep and you eat too late, what your body does is, before you wake up, it tells the body, you're about to wake up, stuff everything that's not eaten up in a fat area. I'm not making this stuff up. And so you eat, and if you're eating your bread at night, your cupcake, your Twinkie, your ice cream, butterscotch crimpus, Jesus. Eh. Let, me sh- let me shout with you. That butterscotch crimpet, right about 9 o'clock, and when you're hungry, and you go get that crimpet, by the morning, it has taken what little nutrition that crimpet has, and then the rest is stuffed up under a fat area, whatever favorite fat area you have. Where y'all at? Y'all, y'all ain't loving me. No, no, wherever it is. For me, it'll go, it'll go around my stomach. It, 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 that's all it's going, because I don't have fat too many other places. I got 20, 26% fat in my body. It all goes in one place. And so some of us need a belly fat cure, and it's simply eat to live. The second thing we need to understand is this. We have to think to live. Your thoughts matter. And and it's funny because your emotional health, if you're not thinking right, you'll eat whatever. We're my emotional eaters. Thank you for being honest. Some of y'all ain't going, men ain't going to raise their hand. And you get emotional. And then you start eating and eating instead of eating the right thing. And so you have to think right. The Bible says very quickly, Luke eleven thirty four 34 says, your eyes are the lamp of your body. So if your eyes are healthy, that means if I'm looking at the right stuff, your whole body will be full of light. But when your vision is bad, your body is full of darkness. That means what I'm looking at matters to my health. We're my food channel people. Yeah, the Food Network. Where my Food Network folk at? Yeah. You got to be so careful at what you're, what you're looking at because your eyes are the window or the gateway to what you're really going to want. Let me tell you something. Why you think they putting those commercials on TV? Cheetos and all the different special stacks. Where, who got the snack drawers? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. I don't want to see. No, no, not the good snacks, the bad snacks. <laughs> unhealthy focus bad life healthy focus good life and so the bible tells us my children pay attention to what i say listen careful to my words don't lose sight of them let the word penetrate deep into your heart for that they bring life to those who find them and healing to the whole body Guard your heart above all these, for it determines the course of your life. You have to be careful what you think because your thoughts rule your mind. Your mind rule what you eat. Some people are like, oh, I can't eat right. You know, it's just you don't understand what I go through. My day is busy. It takes work to live right in your health. It takes work to prepare meals. It takes work to eat right. And this month, as you go on this journey with us, it takes work. It's going to take you cooking a whole bunch of chicken, putting it in the box, and put, putting a little plastic container, and taking that to work instead of eating whatever. Instead of, oh, it's an easy day, let me eat pizza. Ooh, let me move, let me move. I'm moving quickly. I'm, I'm almost through. Live to manage your energy. If I'm going to be fit for life, I got to, got to be energized right. There are two things needed to energy management, rest and exercise. Not enough rest and not enough exercise, 
you're always tired. Please don't raise your hand. You know who you are. I'm just tired. Well, you're tired because, you, one, you might get enough rest, but there's no exercise. And your body's designed that if there's no physical labor, most of our jobs, we just sitting at a desk. And because you're not doing nothing, your body is just get, it's like, oh, let me tell you something. Oh, just a few days out of the gym, I get weak. Yes, I, 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 I didn't go to the gym for like three days. I went back, tried to get up under my normal weight. I, I got up under, down. I was like this. I was putting my weight on. I was like, uh, 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 woo. Because when you're, when you're working out, you got to psych yourself up, especially by yourself. I was like, yeah, yeah. I put my normal weight, 235. I, I could do it no problem. Before, I put it on. <laughs> I just threw it back up, walked away like I did something. Because <laughs> what you don't do regularly, you start to lose. And you're not eating, you're not thinking right, and so you go down a pathway. And so this Fit for Life series is designed to hopefully challenge you. Rest right now. My phone, your, your smartphone is smart. Let me tell you what it'll do. My phone tells me at about 11 o'clock, time to go to bed or you will not get enough sleep. How many phones, your phone did it? I have a reminder on my phone. It tells me to go to bed. Even though I might not do it, it tells me go to bed. And I look at it and go, all right, I'm going to ignore that. I'm, I'm, I'm about to go. It might take me another hour or two. Then I look at the time. I look at my Fitbit. I found out I only slept for three and a half hours. And I, I've done that, like, back to back six or seven days. I'm like, oh, man, I'm only sleeping. I didn't slept three hours that day, four hours that day. Fitbit will tell you. How many people got your Fitbits? If you're not, we, we need to give away a few Fitbits. So, look at y'all. Go buy your Fitbit. Stop being cheap. Uh, the Fitbit will tell you how long you're sleeping, how long you're walking, how long you're moving. And I realized, wait a minute. I said, oh, I'm not resting enough. And the day that I could not lift my weight, it was the day I only slept for four hours. So on top of it, I realized that the strength that God's trying to get you to, you have to do right and live right and stop staying up late watching the wrong shows. Ooh. Okay. I better move. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, it says, keep yourself in training for godly life. Physical exercise is good for your body, but spiritual exercise is valuable in every way because it not only helps you in your present life, but prepares you for your life to come. We have to learn how to live. And so living includes supporting friends. You need the right people around you. Come on, high five somebody next to you. Come on, I, say, I need you in my life. Come on, somebody else needs you in life. The Bible says two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other person can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. And let me tell you something. The worst thing in the world is trying to work out and you don't have nobody to push you. It's tough. It's, it's real tough. Because you're, you're like, oh, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I did one. You need someone to, and I love talking to my friend. Uh, Pastor Smith, every now and then, uh, he'll, he'll, uh, we'll call each other, we'll FaceTime, and he says, he'll, he'll look at me and go, he said, man, look, let me see your face, let me see what you, let me look, let me look at you, man. He said, man, you're looking fat. I'm like, oh. I was like, I said to myself, well, I am feeling a little bloated right now. <laughs> yeah, they got to make a, now that's, he, this is back in, when I wasn't moving, I wasn't doing enough to work out, I, he was like, man, you're looking a little, now he, he looked at me, he seen me on my vacation, but he said, man, you look so, your, your, your face, I can see your neck and everything. I said, thank, thank you, thank you. You need someone to encourage you, but somebody that you'll listen to when they say, I know you're not even eating right, I know you're not exercising, I know you're not doing anything, come on, let's go for a walk. I'm so grateful for my dog. Even though we're not like that, um, I'm grateful for him because every morning, every morning, I'll go work out, I'll come home, and the dog will run around in circles. And I'll be like this. 
Mm -mm. I'll go and eat my breakfast, and he'll 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 look at me. He's sitting in my face. I said, I'll let you out. I'll let him go outside in the yard. Go ahead. He'll go out in the yard. He'll come back. Look at me. I, I, I don't, I, I have this great ability to, to ignore this animal. I will look at TV. I'll be like, and then he'll put his paw up. I'll be like this. he go, you want to go out? He'll run to the door. He's like, you going to walk me or what? He makes sure, he says, you know what, you're going to take me for a walk today. It ain't raining. The sun is out. You're going you're gonna to walk me. And I love it because it's almost like accountability because when I come off of it, it gives me an extra 2,000 steps every time I walk them. And I say, man, I needed that. Thanks, dog. You need somebody in your life that will make you do something because some of us aren't doing nothing at all. Ooh, let me close my last one. Is this helping one person? Please tell me I'm helping one person. Okay, here, here's the thing. To live, I have to depend on God. Three factors I got to put on to do. First of all, I need God for motivation, for reward, and for power. For motivation, it is the Holy Spirit that helps me, and motivates me. And when I tap into the things of God, it motivates me for more. The Bible tells us whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, you must do it all for the glory of God. The motivation for why I want to have a, a six-pack, the motivation for why I want to look right is because I want to honor God. I am God's praise in the earth. And I don't bring him glory not being motivated to get the body in shape and in order. I can't even pull myself up to save myself if a dog is chasing me. Come on, somebody. Well, I'm friendly with dogs. But there might be a dog that you might, might be coming after you, and you got to pull yourself up, and you can't do one pull up. Just one. Just, dog, no. No, no. The motivation is I want to honor you, God, with this body. Funny thing in the world. I don't know if y'all remember, but Bobby Brown was on the uh, on a fit show. What was it called? Celebrity Fitness. Did y'all see this? Anybody seen it? Oh my God! He was really scared of dogs, and they, it was Celebrity Fitness, and they sick the dog on him, and Bobby Brown was running. And he was, no, no, this ain't no. And he got to the fence, the, the thing that, the, the, all he had to do was get over it. They took, they took that clip off of YouTube. You cannot find that. He made them. He said, no, you ain't going to put that up there. You ain't going to put my greatest failure. <laughs> he couldn't get over the wall. And then he had, you know how they do the little camera shot? And they got to talk to the camera. That wasn't even funny. I'm really afraid. I, could, I, would, I wish I, I couldn't get myself over. He said, that right there was the epitome of my fatness. That I couldn't save myself. I couldn't run. Some of us can't run a few feet without getting tired. Now, it's one thing if you have medical conditions and health, your knees, you got arthritis, I get it. Amen. But let's declare God's a healer. I did, now, look, and, and, and it's never too late. If you look online, you'll see women and men that are in their 60s, in their 70s, and they are fit. I just seen on TV a lady, she's in her 75, and she's doing Olympics, the marathons and runs and javelins, and she's doing the little thing over the jump, the pole vaulting, and all sorts of things at 60-something. She's not safe. Oh, she's not safe. The second thing is reward. The Bible says all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for eternal prize. My motivation to live is that this is not just about my now, it's about my tomorrow. It's about bringing glory to God in my body so others can see God is good all the time. And so it's a reward. The final thing is power, and I close. Power. God is not working in you, giving you the desire, the power to do what pleases him. He's giving you that power to be able to please him. You have the power. God is now working in you, giving you that power. You have the power to eat right. Come on, declare it. I got the power to eat right. I got the power to live right. And I got the power to exercise. You have it. 
You just have to make up your mind, make it, make it a choice. I don't care if every day you do just 12 little sit-ups uh, and then you do a, a 50 little get, sitting in a chair, get up. Yeah, work, do 50 little squats. Sit in a chair, get up. 50, get up. Sit, until you can do it unassisted by putting your hands on it, until you can do it and you get stronger and stronger because the fit for life process for us is not just a, a oh, pastor just trying to get you there. No, this is God wanting you to live longer so you bring glory to his name and he can use you for his glory. <laughs> now we're going to go eat. <laughs> yeah. I'm prepping y'all. I said I did all that. Now, now I'm gonna send you to go eat right. Now, no, that'll make sure that everyone can get some because y'all, some of y'all will put more on y'all plate. Oh, we, oh, she said no. We're gonna control that. We're gonna serve them. <laughs> Listen, this 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 month is gonna be really exciting because I'm gonna challenge you. Now we did the walking. We set the walking up, and uh, not too many of you came out. I'm assuming that y'all walking on your own. How many people started walking on their own? How many people started walking on their own? Okay. Now listen, you don't have to walk. You can ride your bike. How many people got bicycles? <laughs> so listen, this is not just walking. I need you to walk. I need you to ride your bike. Get a bike. You can get a scooter if you want. Not the electric one. The ones you got to do this. No, something that will cause for you to move. How many people are going to participate? You said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. This month. Just this month, I'm going to do something. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Come on, keep your hand up, keep your hand up. You're going to do something. You're going to change your eating, whatever it is. Come on, we're going to do something. Amen. All right? All right? And look, your something could just be, you're going to do this. You're going to sit down in the chair and get up a few times and just work out. But we're going to get our life in line with God to honor God. Amen? So, Father, even now, as we prepare to stand to our feet, oh God, I pray.